Hello, Spirit 1053. You're with Erica and Steve. Awesome. Do y'all pay power bills? <laughs> is this Red Walker? <laughs> this is. <laughs> we barely pay our own power bill, mister. <laughs> Listen, with, with the price of gas, I told my family we're not using <laughs> any other thing. You can make a fire outside to heat the water bowl. <laughs> <laughs> Rhett, we are so glad you're here and quite frankly, so glad that you're still with us. You were part of a miracle recently, weren't you? Gosh, it feels like it, yeah. The Lord definitely went before us. There's a lot of things that could have went differently, but thankfully we're here and I'm finally back home after 50 hours straight on that bus. Oh. Mm. So I'm just walking places now. I'm like, I'm going to force to sit for 50 <laughs> hours. These legs are moving. So what happened exactly on that highway? So we were headed up to Pennsylvania, and it was supposed to just be snow, like no one really expected. We'd kind of been watching it. And then overnight, it froze, and so our bus driver just pulled us to the side and was like, we can't go. we got to wait till daylight. And then the way this one road was, I think it was 581 or something like that, um, we come over the hill, and there's cars slamming on brakes, and they're hitting ice. And mm. so a car broke down, and an AT wheeler went into that car. But the way the hill was, you just couldn't see. Oh. So it, was, it was too late. And so our driver did amazing, and Jesus went before us because we ran into about four or five cars. But the way we hit... Like it, like some, you know, it broke out windows and kind of squished the back of the car, but nothing like huge. It was a 73 car pile up, and the worst was a broken arm. That's amazing. Thank you, Lord. It's crazy. Wow. So, how did that change your day? (laughs) (laughs) Well, (laughs) we uh, sat there and (laughs) had to wait, and the police and EMS and firefighters were super kind. And it's amazing, you know, to watch how they take this pile up and get everything straightened out and you know i would have just looked at it and been like this is where these cars live now (laughs) when are you gonna go on a stand-up tour you are on Uh, fire we can (laughs) but we went and ate mexican after that in pennsylvania and because the show got canceled and it was uh the most expensive mexican trip i've ever made wow okay Wow. Um, This is really interesting to me because up until maybe a week or so ago, I thought this guy is a talented singer. He's a family man. He loves Jesus. You still don't think those things? No, no, I do. I believe all of those things. (laughs) But what we didn't know is you excel at the DIY thing. So inquiring minds want to know, have you heard from Chip or Joanna Gaines yet? Uh, No, I think they've misplaced my number. (laughs) Because I I put on a show with painting my wall. I I walk by it every day, and I like to say out loud, what professional did this? And then I go, yeah, it was me. Um, (laughs) You know, that's what I feel when I see that wall. Uh, But, yeah, they haven't called me yet. Neither is HGTV, and I think it's because I would be better than everybody. Oh, man. Honestly, you know. HGTV would want that, though. Yeah, that is true. Have you ever watched uh, the show Rock the Block? No. No. If you like any type of stuff like that, you'd dig it. Like, they put four of the same houses. It's like in a neighborhood. Same build. And there's four different teams. And whoever wins with the highest appraisal. So you get to go in and watch how people do, like, different living rooms. You know, same build, but it's how their imagination, like, makes it happen. It's really cool. But the problem is it gets me in April, like, all kind of excited. If we start planning things, we have no business planning. (laughs) You get on ladders that are really high and scare everybody on Instagram. Oh yeah, yeah. I didn't. Uh, I didn't realize people people love me that much. But I had so many like grandparents. I felt like they were just like, be careful up there, sweetie. <laughs> Rhett, that's awesome. So, Rhett, with Easter coming up, yeah. Could you share with us what's uh, what amazes you most about the Easter story? Okay. Um, yeah, that feels loaded. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we switch gears there on you. Yeah. I know. I mean, I guess I also paint eggs, so there is a, a transition there. Yep. That's a good um, transition. Now, I, I think the, the coolest thing, we all know the story, I think the coolest thing is living each season 
um, with, you know, my kids. Like I, now I have a three-year-old that can kind of understand it's more than dying eggs and, and hunting for them in the backyard. Yes. And, you know, the story that he hears at church, it gets to get a little bit deeper each year. And then just kind of also be able to watch my 17-year-old and 14-year-old who are starting to branch out, like especially my 17-year-old. Like her worldview and the way she's li- going to live life is there's nothing I can really change about that now. The parenting, I can only help course correct, you know? And so it's cool to be able to sit down and have these conversations that are stories that she and my family have heard since we were all babies, especially if you grew up in church, Mm -hmm. and just be able to watch them go, this is what I lean on. The fact that it was dark, and it can be a dark time right now in the world, but and the world was then wondering, like, what is what is happening? What is going on? And we're able to go right now, still today, even when it hits the fan. He came, he died. Three days later, he rose again, and he's preparing a place for us. Wow. And so when it's, it's all hit the fan for a three-year-old, whatever that might mean, like maybe we didn't give him the snack he wanted or the candy he wanted, <laughs> or a 17-year-old who, you know, is Lord knows the drama that 17-year-olds get. I would not, you couldn't pay me to go back to high school. I wouldn't want to be that age for nothing. Nope. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and then to like me being 35, you know, every everybody's got a different dark days and seasons that they walk through. But just to be able to go, hey, at the end of the day, like he's preparing a place for me right now. This is not where I live. This is not my home. My home's on the other side of glory. I can't wait till we get there. But until we get there, I'm going to continue to tell people the story of sustainable joy, peace, and happiness that comes from Jesus. Rhett Walker, he's got a little preacher in him, a little painter in him, singer, (laughs) dad, comedian. (laughs) We love you. Thanks for being with us. Oh, of course. God bless you and yours. Thanks, Rhett. Yep, thank y'all.